Good morning and welcome to Rising. We've got a slightly above average show today, Robbie, and part of that is because I forgot my glasses today, so <laughs> I'm going to be sort of flying half blind with the teleprompter. So We're going to all enjoy watching you squint <laughs> to try to read uh, the side teleprompter. This should be, should be a very enjoyable show for me, and maybe for you, not <laughs> yes, for Ryan. I think so. But President Biden is on his way to Brussels to meet with Western leaders on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. His meetings began, begin tomorrow, where he's expected to cast more sanctions on Russia and seek more aid for Ukraine. But today, Brianna Joy Gray will join us to discuss whether it's time to nationalize oil. Interesting, interesting. Let's, let's do that. Later, Shauna Thomas and Pamela Denise Long will be here to break down how Congress is cashing in on the Ukraine crisis. But first, Los Angeles saw gas prices rise to a whopping $6 a gallon on average. The first U.S. city to do so as the cost of oil and inflation continues to surge. According to CNBC, oil prices are up this week over an estimated drop in uh, U.S. crude inventories. That I can't read. Signaling a rise in demand <laughs> while talks of a fresh oil embargo on Russia fueled supply worries. So one oil market analyst told CNBC we could expect to see continued high volatility through the rest of the week and especially around the NATO summit. They added that there may be some relief if the EU doesn't ban Russian oil imports. Hmm. Meanwhile, legislation is being floated to help Americans at the pump. Some proposals include a stimulus check, while others would tax oil companies that would in turn provide financial assistance to consumers struggling to pay the price. ExxonMobil has, it has made its largest profits in seven years, raking in a whopping $23 billion in 2021. And as oil prices rise, they're projected to make nearly $38 billion this year. Hmm. Maybe we don't need to subsidize these companies would be my I'm, I'm for be my key I'm, I'm for stripping away. their subsidies absolutely and going after their their windfall profits yeah. you know as it, it's it's really cute how the free market works here isn't it when when oil a barrel rises yeah. then gas prices rise when oil per barrel drops gas prices either stay flat or keep rising and they say oh well it takes us a while right. to incorporate these price changes into our inventory but except when oil prices rise they're out there changing that number immediately, right. up, upwards. Well, but it's it not doesn't exactly. come back downwards because that they, they feel like they can get, they're going to get away with that as long as they possibly can. It's not exactly the free market at work because cartel, the, right? The commodities <laughs> prices are set by a government collection of a bunch right. of governments, right? But the levers up and down right. operate differently. Yeah, and and we and we saw saw that over the last several weeks where when it goes up, the gas the gas companies, like the actual gas stations, like they jack up prices immediately. You know, they, 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 they watch that spot price move. And when, it, when it's up, they go up. When it comes down, they're like, eh, let's see what happens next. Yeah. I think we'll, think we'll let, let this no, but And then it comes back up, like, oh, let's go up again. So it's like a ratchet effect upwards. But seriously, we should stop subsidizing it. And then maybe other energy sources of energy would be able to compete more easily instead, instead of just subsidizing everything. If, instead of the government trying to pick winners and losers and decide, okay, we're going to subsidize this, this much, and this, this much, and this, this much, just let them, they, if they all could just openly compete, maybe, uh, maybe some of the alternative energy sources you prefer that are better for our planet, they would perform better. And does withdrawing subsidies also include recalling the naval fleets that are protecting all the oil shipping routes? Yeah, oh, naval fleets. We that. should sell those ships too to sell to, pri to pirates. Really, sell them to pirates. <laughs> in my uh, ideal world. Basically, the only gas we'd have was was whatever we could frack out of Pennsylvania. That's at right. That point. That's right. Frack, yeah. baby, frack. Yeah, and then and then yeah, right. Then people are going to start exploring renewables and push toward independence. It's fine, fine by me. Yeah. Fine but by in, me. But in the meantime, the the kind of the populist reaction, and I, I, Lucas Kuntz put it really well, is cap profits at 5%. I think you know the details of that would need to be worked out. But in other words, a windfall profits tax, like you know, that's, it's kind of a knee-jerk populist reaction, but oftentimes that's the thing to do in a moment like this. Yeah. Like just go, just go get, like Exxon, what do they make, 21 billion? Or 38 billion or whatever obscene amount of money. Whatever that you profit. couldn't read it when it was on the right. screen, so you have no <laughs> a idea. Lot. It was a lot of money. Go tax it, mm -hmm. go get it. Yeah, I'd want to know what an economist says about that. What, they're, what would they, what would they we, say is not good about that? You, you don't need to ask an economist <laughs> on questions that are actually about political power. Mm -hmm. And so if you started even just talking about this, 
all of a sudden you spook them into you'd spook them and you'd see the gas stations because they, they would just magically get the message oh, okay fine we're, we're pulling our prices down next my, my radar's on on that on a similar phenomenon of the credit rating agencies all, uh, all of a sudden they're like okay fine medical debt we're going to back off of medical debt just because they were under a lot of pressure from the CFPB. Yeah, that, it does work that way. Yeah. It does work. Sometimes uh, regulators just got to threaten. Maybe right. we're going to take a closer look at yeah, this. We're gonna, well, we're not doing that. Why yeah. would you look at that? Yeah. You're not doing it now. Well, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said the Fed will continue to hike interest rates until inflation is under control, even if that means increasing rates quicker than anticipated, though he noted that he still expects inflation to run high through the rest of the year. This means you could see some big rate increases for credit cards, mortgages, and other loans. Which is, you know. And higher unemployment if, right. if it works as it's intended. The problem here is that inflation is being driven by oil prices mm -hmm. and also by other commodities that are spiking particularly right now as a result of the war. So, you know, what, what are the two of the things that underlie, you know, most of what we consume? Oil and wheat and other, other right. you know, food commodities like that. I mean, there's some debate over the sources of the inflation, too. I mean, the inflation was getting bad before the war started. Uh, right, but that was from money, largely from energy and also right. from the supply chain being broken at a time when the economy was opening back up. And people were, and also people had shifted from you know going out to just buying stuff, right. and so there was more pressure on the supply chain. The supply chains couldn't handle it, and the the point of all of that is to say that raising interest rates doesn't actually do anything about any of those things, except it will take money out of some people's pockets, and so there will be slightly less purchasing power. People will be poorer, and as a result, they'll be buying fewer things, which could help the supply chain get moving a tiny bit, right. but that's and, only and one piece of it. In theory, drive the price down right. of those things. Right, of that, yeah. but that's just one little, that's just one little piece of it. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But and, I, and, the, and the upshot is like lots, lots of pain and suffering among people who are going to have less money. Yeah. Well, we got to get the Ukraine situation worked out. It, it's, I mean, this is Biden to have any hope of being reelected. Uh, it's, it's too late. There's already the bloodbath in, in the congressional right. midterms yeah. that, that cannot be salvaged. But, you know, Biden, to have any shot of a second term, needs to, he needs to fix the economy. He, we need gas prices under control. We need things to feel normal again, the way he promised right. that that's how we were going to feel. Normality again, or else he's yeah. done, or else he has no chance. He would lose to Trump. And, and that is a damning statement. And after, after these wheat price spikes start filtering through the global yeah. economy, I think you're going to see uh, riots and uprisings all across the global south. It even, and could even creep into places like Italy and, and Greece as well. That, you know, that's what triggered the Arab Spring, high, bre high bread prices. And then it evolved into calls for human rights and, mm -hmm. and freedom and anti-corruption. I think you could see that you're going to see that all over the place, uh, and and we're only we're only now beginning to see it, which is another reason. Especially to as end COVID this. recedes, you know. Just remember, we had that the summer of 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 protests following George Floyd mm -hmm. here in in America at a at a time where there was where it seemed like maybe it was okay to go outside and do things again. I mean, it was always okay to go outside right. and do things, but. We thought maybe the pandemic was receding or people were in the mood for it to recede and then all that kind of stuff happened And then it was actually not the end of the pandemic by any stretch of the imagination But now it really is probably the end of the pandemic. right people are angrier today even now yes. people were furious in 2010 2011 because of the wake of the financial crisis right. but I think they're even angrier today because of the lack of recovery plus then two years of COVID mm -hmm. Plus the yawning. Domestically, the people are clearly angrier. Right. I don't I mean know about in the, the places world. where you're yeah. talking about, but maybe. We'll, we're going to find out. <laughs> we're certainly going to find out. But immediately, we're going to find out what's on our radars, because that's up next.